Doki. Back. Oh, hold on. Need to edit the edit the stream info. Be with, bear with me a second. Hello, you beautiful people, I'm back and I'm going to play some Drizzle Path Genie. I got the band ending last time, so we're going to try and get the good ending this time. Let's get into it. Apparently, this path's shorter, so it shouldn't take as long as last time. Once upon a time. Isn't that how stories are supposed to begin? That is how my mother always began her stories. But why can't they end that way? Because the ending is usually when the promise of everlasting happiness is proclaimed. What are stories if not the memories of our people? And if memory is any clue, there is no guarantee of happiness. Is it just a myth that there is any such thing as happily ever after? Memory is a broken mirror, fragments of reflective glass and fractures of light, gleaming in brilliance for a moment before fading forever into vague washes of soft color and deepening shade. Sometimes, the harder we try to focus on them, the more they fade and slip from our grasp. Beautiful shards that, when taken all together, make us who we are. Memories or dreams. Sometimes it is impossible to tell the difference. Ah, uh, yeah, sure is. Last night in my dreams, a mysterious wizard came to me. He spoke in a foreign voice, a series of strange sounds that formed a single Some word. Deep shit indeed. <laughs> in that word was a message that I understood. He said that I had been chosen and at the same time cursed. Lula, he said, because of your gifts of both endurance and vision, you have been chosen to retrieve the sacred relic of your people, the genie. Yeah, this is, a, this is a walking simulator for people who haven't seen this game before, but... But another wizard, who wants the genie yeah. for himself, has cursed you with the inability I played, I played to all run. Four games of these the other night. Even now he makes his yeah. way to the top of the mountain to claim it's, it's it as time. his own. You must reach the genie before him and learn its purpose, its power, for if he takes possession of it, you will be further cursed with the inability to walk. You and your people will never again be free to choose your own path. Right. So make haste, child. Do not tarry. Though the path is long, it is the shortest. Though the path is not easy, it is simple. Though you walk alone, fear not. I will be with you, but you will soon have an important choice that only you can make, and that choice will make all the difference. Oh yes, also walk, lovely. Thus, I woke to a morning of light drizzle, and under the soft light of early dawn, began to walk towards the mountain of fire. Life in the village has fallen out of balance since the genie disappeared. Before then, we had the freedom to choose our own paths in life. But now they are decreed by the shamans when we come of age. 
There are hunters and fishers, collectors and keepers, weavers and walkers. Only one path has ever been chosen for each person, until me. The shamans decreed that I am both weaver and walker. Weavers do not just weave fish baskets and blankets. They are also weavers of words, poets, and storytellers. They keep the history of our people and weave their words into the warp and woof of every textile. Walkers are the wanderers and wanderers, the dreamers and askers of questions. They are the seekers of whatever light they may find to illuminate the darkest corners of hearts and minds. Of all that have walked away from the village, here we go. None have returned. Right at the start of the game, I was meant to make. I made a choice. <laughs> I went right last time, so we're going to go left this time. Yeah, I went up. I went up that way, but apparently we're meant to go this way to get the good ending. Yeah, it's the very beginning of the game. Yeah, you have to make you have to make a choice right at the start, and that depends what ending you get. Like decides what ending you get even. Yeah, we're already doing it. Already looks a little different. left path feels right. Good to know. <laughs> Gonna say anything, lady? She was talking the whole way last time. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh. <laughs> Not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Must be that. <laughs> Are they the same things? 
Or is it simply the end of feeling? Perhaps mercifully? Perhaps tragically? I had seen death and wondered what it was. I have been there to hold the dying when the shamans pressed a finger to their mouths and whispered them away. We each imagine something different for them, whatever soothes the heart, but I fear that death is nothing. Oh, How can we know? So it seems impossible right. to imagine the end of imagination, to think of the end of thought. The answer to the mystery of death may be in the answer to the mystery of life. <clears throat> then the universe held its breath, as if the gods themselves were waiting for a sign, a sign in their long slumber to wake them from dream. The shamans say that the gods fell asleep long ago, before the time of people, when there was nothing but stars in the darkness, in their sleep, they dreamed the world and us into being. It's a pretty myth, but I wonder if it's true? And if so, what happens when they wake? As I walk, I wonder what I will find at the top of the mountain of fire. I have only heard of the genie in stories and have never seen it myself. I feel awe, and with it, more than a little fear. Can there be reverence without fear? Awe without mystery? We seek answers, but resist them when they threaten the notions we feel. Often we prefer to dwell in the dreams of the heart than in the truth of the mind. The genie has power. This much I know. Oh, okay. I would definitely choose the right path if I had another chance. Well, that leads to the bad ending, so we're not choosing that path, lady. I remember my mother. Though I was only a girl of eight when she walked away from the village and me forever, I remember that day and have dreamed it many times since. When she came of age, the shamans had decreed that she was a walker. But this brought her great sorrow, because she was certain she was a weaver. She felt cursed. She longed for the return yeah, of the genie path, so she could decide her own it. path. It was raining for a start. <laughs> she left was a cold and rainy autumn day, before the tall grasses had been harvested. I saw her in her sky-blue summer dress, long hair, black as the night, weighed far out into the field and then stopped. She gazed pretty, but upwards into the sky as the wind stopping. made her distant figure look Not like a broken well, patch of summer sky, fallen to the ground and battered by the breeze. She clutched herself with her arms, and I felt her sadness. I ran to her as fast as I could. Yeah, it's a pretty good feature, actually. It's, it's all the, the walking simula simulator's got all going for him, really. So it has to be a, has to be a good one. When I finally got to her side, I stopped and reached to take her hand. She felt my touch and pulled away, mm, looking down at me with those pale gray eyes. We're going there. Even washed in rain, I could tell she was crying. 
Her eyes seemed to look through me. What if it rained only once in a lifetime, and you missed it? She asked. Of me or anyone, I couldn't tell. She turned her gaze to the distant horizon and whispered, What is life, if not the longest goodbye? And she walked away. Oh, okay. I close my eyes and see her hurling crumpled papers against candlelit walls, a stranger in her own body. I see her weeping somewhere in the dark corners of our cottage. It yeah. pains my Probably father, really. but she yeah. couldn't heal Maybe his wounds. That. She was gone. He woke, the dust still moist with her tears. How she wept and everything in my world was shattered. I hear her and feel like painting. Instead, I run. I run through the rain until it feels like pieces of glass on my skin. I run to the shoreline and fall among the ruins where the sand meets the water meets the sky. Because she speaks sometimes when she sleeps, entire worlds and strange articulations that sound out the heart in more uncommon clarity than my most awkwardly acrobatic didactics. Because she sleeps, sometimes when she dreams, entire worlds with certain gesticulations, her hands seemingly demonstrating a moth stricken by her charmingly unconventional inventions. Because she dreams, sometimes when she speaks, entire worlds unintentionally expressing in one simple sound why anyone anywhere ever some foreboding music here For ten long winters, I've pondered her questions. Is life just a long goodbye? A brief, bright spark of imperfection disturbing oh, the twin expanses well. of otherwise perfect, infinite nothing? Guess Maybe. Long, That's why the shamans it. deemed her a walker and not a weaver. She had no answers, only questions. Questions that can only be answered by walking on the path. A journey to find some mystery to fill the cracked vessel of her heart. A journey to find the genie. Uh, some night on a rock. Ooh, what's, what's here? Nah, okay. See you walking on the path. But what is the genie? How could it make a difference in the freedom to choose our own paths in life? What power did it hold? And who made it? I could only hope that these questions and more would be answered when I found the genie. I daydreamed about what it would look like. I do not know how far I have yet to travel, or if ever I will find it. I worry that I have chosen the wrong path, but there is no turning back now. Well, I chose the wrong path last time, so... We're on the right path now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I 
As a young girl, my best friend was Rofesso, cobbler's son. He had no interest whatsoever in shoes or the making of them. We would meet in the blue fields, throw off our shoes and run. We ran until dusk and returned home only for supper, with feet filthy, our shoes lost. Feet As we sorry. grew, our friendship also grew into affection and ultimately a deep abiding love. The kind of love that knows you are only half of a whole. some platforming to do. Let's jump across the gap. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Easier than the other ones. As we grew, Rofesso would often take to sitting and staring into the faraway distance. There was a longing in his eyes, and I could feel sadness in him. I would take his hand and sit for hours in silence. On one such occasion, as we watched the sun setting, the late summer breeze in our hair, he looked at me and kissed me on the forehead. He said, Unable to stifle the tears, all I could say was, I know. As he rose to depart into the great unknown, I asked, Aren't you afraid of being alone? Yes, he said. My fear is great that I may never see you again, but the fear of living an empty and meaningless life is far greater. Forgive me, Lula. He turned and began to walk away from me. I said, I will watch you until I can't see you anymore. Dark now it. <laughs> My usual active mods in bed. <laughs> All your words and soft gestures do not add up to your silence <clears throat> and your absence, which now blankets me. Such funny sounds you made as we lay on carpets of moss. You put a flower in my hair and marveled at your work. I suffered sweetly your platitudes and knew you would be forever removed by me. <laughs> forever, you whispered, your breath brushing my lips. I was there, undone in fistfuls of flowers. Yeah. <laughs> he's been up all day, so he's probably going to be sleeping all, all Alone, like for 24 hours I too. I wonder if my mother came this way, with her blank brown eyes starved wide, rude pale her meager frame. I remember once she said to me, In a perfect world, I'd make you princess of something, I suppose, and strictly forbid poems. Sweetly she sighed, but fearful to look upon. Thin as cracked lips curling painfully up at the edges. I am only air swelling her gorgon mouth. Some nice looking crystals. <laughs> Trembles her garden, black with forgotten orchids. I think of stairs where you padded softly, of terminal yeah. halls where you paced out the heart, in father's own hut, a wooden vault with dust and black willows scraping the walls, in your dull, empty room, an insurgent sun flickering again, fed on dry fumes, yet 
something soon takes flight, and she rises sweetly again to nocturnal indigo marches. Nothing but embers, her love violet with twilight. With a turn of the neck and a tilt of the chin, she learns of stars that burn in chaos begetting entire worlds. Very poetic. We learn there is no such thing as beginning and end. Would you, in your wise, wide eyes, deliver to me in my outstretched hands a stone? Crochet me into your sleep, weaving dreams in poetry from this darkly fraying patch. See if there's anything in this house. Nope. Nada. Don't let it take all your life to learn you were alive, <coughs> she said to me one drizzly dawn. How my blood swelled with you. In your world, you must be a thousand feet tall, stunned by your own grandeur. Angled, mystical, <laughs> not the ungraceful howled. colossus. <laughs> you dismiss me with coolly delivered denouements. You always knew the proper place to end a poem. I feel you wringing them out, leaving the universe crippled in comparison. If you will, tear the sky and be satisfied. I never said you were beautiful, but my hands may know the texture of closed eyelids, jawline, and perhaps that cheekbone you furrowed with creaks, afraid of only age of yawning, paralytic time, and the absolute center you could forever unfind and otherwise trusted mirrors. I cannot reach this thing inside. Instead, hope falls through your trembling fingers, confounding even the sky. You taught tender, while stuffing softer hearts with bitter. From where I am, sepulchral among howling stones, your autumn leaf hands I would have held, hoping to salvage a wraith-wracked spirit. Will you not cry out? Will you not lay claim to these sedimentary spaces? Will you not stand and cry, this, this, and this is mine? This only I can fill. My tears cannot be heard in such silence. Burn on fragile phoenix. Burn and be done with it. You wept for your own unfulfilled sovereignty, your mourning wild with twilight. I would have held you when the floods came, gently rocking the terrors. I could have delivered you in your ashes, from the salty wastes you consumed with fury. Bend never again to this wound. Still you bend, clutching your sides, travailing in chaos, then slowly turn and look at me and say, nothing. A volcano. Ooh. Still I wander this dark world, bootless on Blackthorn, adrift on an empty sea. Um, I wonder if she this walked way. this way, by what dreams lulled. I see her slender fingers, chewed up nails and all, trying to humbly fit themselves around gigantic no, teacups. Both, both like join into the same path. There is something in it that makes me sad. I just wish I could tell you. I wish I could have told you. Maybe together 
we could have understood. Oh wow, look at that. Going into the volcano, it's got some creepy writing on the on the walls. Runic writing, I think it looks like runes. Into the caves already. Ooh, campfire. We'll rest of it. I saw a time when we gathered together in animal skins, hunched over fires in ancient caves, and murmured a millennial conversation. Under the aegis of leaf wine, I gather my furs about me and stare into the flames. A torch song of fire opals, languid as salamanders, <laughs> a writhing back. nest of fire snakes, <laughs> lazy ribbons of flame, a dream within a dream, lovelier than death, more beautiful than night. It seems there was something we knew then, something important, long forgotten. What mysteries scrawled on cave walls to speak across the great spans of time? What well, heavy knowledge we ignored for so long that now it is too late? Or perhaps it is nothing. Every generation thinks themselves the cleverest yet. Perhaps they are just childish doodles from a simpleton folk unable to render accurately even what they saw with their own eyes. It took us a lot longer to get into the caves last time. This obviously is the quicker path. Where do I go? Oh god. Let's go this way. have to go this way anyway. There we go. Yeah, there we go. What did I do? <laughs> I think I was supposed to go the other way, like, like hit a roadblock then hit this lever. I think that's what I was supposed to do. Um, it's quicker. Oh 
Oh, it's just a path of, path of red shrooms. Is it orange shrooms? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go with orange shrooms. I dreamed I was entombed, and Mother pulled back the heavy stone lid of the sarcophagus. She said, I'll not leave you on some high grid for the vultures to pick at. Child from my womb, a corpse in the tomb, my brittle pristine. I've come to clean the spaces between bare knuckles and gold rings. Fear not the worms, for we are vermivorous, even in long sleep. Fear not in your languid vertebrae. I've come to make scarabs of us. Often when it rains, I think of the fisher. He is a solitary man who lives outside the village in a tiny hut he made himself on the shoreline of the sea. He would spend long days casting his line in the waters, his skin <coughs> down from the sun. I never saw him wear shoes, and his clothes were nearly the rags of a beggar. His hair and beard were long and unkempt as if never cut or combed once in its life. Going the right way. Who knows? The Fisher never took a wife and he had no children. No one knows from okay. where he We're came. The villagers thought him eccentric, perhaps mad. He never ate the fish he caught, but traded them with the villagers for the simple goods of survival. I once saw him pick a grasshopper from a swaying reed, hold it gently in his hand, as if marveling at its construction. Then he dabbed it with a bit of wild honey he had gathered, and ate it whole. Obviously prefers grasshoppers to fish. You know, <laughs> as you do. Once the fisher brought a oh, line it. of beautiful texture. fish to my father to <laughs> trade for a basket. The fish were worth more than one simple basket, so my father offered him a net that he could use to catch more fish. He refused, saying, each Probably. fish is unique. They must be caught individually or not at all. So my father offered him a variety of baskets to keep the fish separate. Again he refused, saying, Once I have gathered them, I must carry them all together or not at all. Makes sense, makes sense. I grew curious about the fisher, so one day I decided to go watch him fishing and perhaps speak with him. 
I sat on a rock not so far behind him. He didn't turn or look at me, but gazed far into the clear blue sky of the summer day and said, Looks like rain today. Where are your shoes, child? It did not look like rain. I answered his question with one of my own. Where are your shoes? He replied, I never had a need of them. I bet it's, I bet it's like feet were filthy. <coughs> and the path goes on and on and on. When one walks deliberately, with purpose and care, they have no need of shoes. But you, you run all the day long without shoes, not because you don't need them, but because you like to feel the ground beneath your feet, even if it hurts you sometimes. I thought how this was true, a truth I had not even thought of myself. The villagers think you are a half-mad hermit, I offered. He laughed and cast his line again. Okay. I suppose they may be right. If my concern for the world about me, being greater than my concern <coughs> for myself, is madness, then yes, I am mad, he continued. We should never want for more than we need, for that is the beginning of the end. The collecting of things beyond our need is, to me, the truer madness. In the endless collecting of things, we become heavy and burdened with possessions. After a time, it is the possessions that possess us. <clears throat> Consider the fishes, he said. They have no possessions and so can flit about on the waters, light and unburdened, free to swim anywhere. If they had possessions to carry, they would sink and die. This seemed obvious enough to me. Fish can't carry things anyway. Consider also the story of a king I once knew. I quietly laughed, as if the mad fisher cavorted with kings. I thought this very unlikely. You never know a person. This king was master of all he surveyed, he went on. He gathered to himself all the riches and fine things of the world. His every desire was met, but still he wanted more. Possessed with accumulation, he neglected his kingdom, even his wife and only son. The more he gained, the more he wanted. He piled up all his treasure in a great storeroom and locked it away. But one day his young son found the key and entered the chamber. I walked in on his... Um Mum and Dad, a bit, probably. <laughs> oh, another cave. It's where the magic happens.
The king heard a loud crash and ran to the treasure room. There he saw a great avalanche of gold falling on his son and crushing him. Try as he could, he could not pull the boy from the heavy flood. He dug and dug in the gold, but his son was lost. Too late did he feel the love he had for his only son. In the collecting of things, he ignored the only thing that really did matter. Stop raining anyway. The king was consumed with grief and vowed to never possess another thing that he didn't need. He gave away all his treasure to the poor people of the kingdom and set out alone to live a life free of possessions. Was this mad fisher once a king? I found it very doubtful. You okay. see, Lula, he said, we often learn too late what is really important in life. There is an old saying that the owl of wisdom only spreads its wings at twilight. What does it mean, I asked. He replied, it means that we only learn the valuable lessons when it is too late. We only decide to change when we are forced into it, with our backs against a wall. We can change at any time if we choose to, but we usually don't until it becomes necessary. In any event, there is always hope. And with that, I heard the sudden rumble of thunder as dark clouds suddenly gathered in the sky and it began to rain. It's a windy path. Fisher turned his face up to the sky and smiled into the rain. At last he turned to me with his wild but knowing eye and said, Seek the middle way, Lula. Between all and nothing, find the middle way. But know that you will not find it out in the world. It is in a secret place that only you can find. And the greatest secret of all is that there is no secret. You will find the genie, and when you do, you will understand even the dreaming gods. It's past twisting all over the place, isn't it? Jeez. I have to jump across. Yep, gotcha. Easy. Be 
piece of piss. Then I knew he was truly mad. It made no sense. A secret that there is no secret. But he spoke to me of the genie long before my dream where the wizard told me to find it. Was it a dream? I can't remember. For all I know, it was real and I am dreaming now. Are we all asleep and dreaming the world? Are the gods real? It is all beginning to confuse me very much. I can only hope that he was right about the genie. I should much like to reach the mountain before winter falls. I wonder if my mother came this way. Did she brave the storms and lean into the wind, pressing on? Turning Don't back I... never seems an option, I know, having come this far myself. Sometimes in the wind, I think I can hear you singing to me. You sing the rains. You sing the snows to me. It makes me brave against the elements. Sure is. It's even a little, even a little bit more winding than last the last one, so I guess it is the harder path. <clears throat> How my mind has frozen on you, on a soul beautiful as first frost. I am snow blind, mad without footprints. Your coronal pallor, contoured and torpid as an angel's trumpet. I close my eyes and imagine you alone in a forest chapel, Snowing. watching the snows fall on midwinter's eve. You see me through the window, standing alone in the dark pines, storm torn and buffeted by the winds. You see me and slowly draw the curtains. I lean into the cold and think of the pale promise locked in winter. Though it is the dying of summer, the quietly encroaching cold hiding in leaves, it holds the expectancy of spring. A diminuendo of green sadly A passes, diminuendo. but will keep warm the winter long and clutch the memory of warmth in our hearts. Though spring promises nothing of herself in returns, and summer swears no shrift of conscience in its leave-taking, we sing. come to regret that we rued the florid heat of summer, even as it slips always away again. We may yet sing of birth and rebirth, as the new grass lights the air and meadow birds sing with us. Winter groans in sheets of ice and burdens of snow, but in that voice we hear the promise of spring. With mittened hands cupped against the cold, we sing of life and light again the candles of hope.
Not much left, I guess. Doesn't look like it. <coughs> this is a lot quicker. It took me about two and a bit hours, I think. First time. who simply never choose a path. They know that neither extreme is balanced, that they cannot find the middle path, and so they become ah. frozen in a stasis of indecision. Distracted by anything and following the whims okay. of the day, they seek to fill the emptiness with any passing fancy. They too seek the genie, but they do not know why, and so become lost. Speaking Even with unmoving eyes. eyes they see me, they would eat me alive if they could. I often think of my very first memory as a child. It was the spring thaw, when the blankets of snow began to melt, the sun shined its warmth, and the birds began to sing again. In my mother's frozen garden was a stone that had cracked, buckled by the cold. And there in the crack was a single tiny white flower, a bloom of only four petals, it bravely opened to face the world and greet the sun, as if in defiance of death itself. Okay. Plucky little flower. I knelt by the little snow flower and wondered at it. Here was life in the midst of frozen nothingness. It seemed precarious, tender, so unlikely in its setting. But there must be some hidden strength in it to have emerged here, overcoming the elements and the odds. It seems a fortunate incident of nature, like life itself, perhaps not magical, but wonderful that it has occurred. Even at that age, the flower made me ponder the teachings of the shamans. They told of how the world is dreamed up by the sleeping gods, <coughs> and that when, when we die, we will join them in their dream of paradise and live forever. But I have seen birth and death, and know that they are different. I witness the workings of the world and think it natural, not the magical dreaming of imaginary gods. We ain't started climbing the mountain yet. Start climbing this mountain, eh? I cannot tell my thoughts to anyone. They would think me blasphemous or even mad question the shamans. They would think I had lost sight of the truth, of the mysterious, magical workings of life itself. They would think me irreverent, at the very least. But it is not so. Considering the triumph of the tiny flower in the midst of a frozen garden, I have a profound reverence for the unlikely presence of life.
intense music coming. Oh. <clears throat> to say that life is simply magic is, to me, of less value than if it developed as an inevitability in the infinite spans of time and gained a foothold enough to thrive against all the odds. Life is a champion of chance. There is more awe and wonder in this truth than to simply dismiss it as the providence of some great and mystical unknowable. It is made all the more special by its unlikelihood. <laughs> oh, it's a dragon. <laughs> I thought it was chasing me. <laughs> Average path here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is there something behind me? It was a dragon, but it was in the air. Step on the air. Maybe. There we go. Yeah. I'm walking on air. <laughs> Tucked between twin expanses of endless nothing. That's it. We're here, in the air. for a brief and <laughs> shining moment, is something rare and beautiful. Life. It sings in me. And I know that I am. Joy fills my heart, and I know that I will never squander a moment of life, however long or brief it may be. We live, we laugh, we learn and grow old. We love and we die. Between birth and death, we have this one chance to just let it be beautiful. falls to the ground, the world trembling with change. I have no wishes. fear. I feel that soon my path will end, and I know not <laughs> what I will find. But I have had this time, this one chance to truly be alive. I have lived and loved. Along with heartache and loss, I have known beauty and joy. Even if the end is upon me, I consider how fortunate I've been to have this one brief, shining moment. I have lived, and that is more than enough. I found no answers along the path, only more questions. What is the genie? What does it do? Grant's wishes. Who made it? I and where is it from? I shall soon find out. Perhaps it will answer all my questions. I have considered that it may pose more questions than answers and feel that somehow I already know the answers. And now I see.
Yeah, made the end a lot quicker this time. It took about two hours last time. Must be the genie. Solid, inanimate, but somehow organic. And there next to it stands the wizard that spoke to me in my dreams. As I draw nearer, I can hear his voice again. That strange sound with unmoving lips that I can understand his words. Lula, he said, you have made it to the mountain of fire and now stand before the genie. You have chosen to face your fears along the shortest path. In facing the darkness of your mind, you have conquered yourself. You have learned that the answers to your questions are within you. You have yeah, learned hope. Daft Punk. <laughs> the path you have chosen is the shortest path, and so you are victorious. Your arrival precedes that of the other wizard who sought to curse you. Still he wanders the other path, having chosen what he thought was the easiest way. Now you may lay your hand on the genie, and the program will continue. Then the dragon eats him, yeah. <laughs> program? I asked. I don't understand. What is the genie? The genie, he began is a computational construct, what we call a processor. As an operating administrator, I have introduced a packet of data into the genie. It arranges the data into information that runs a program. This program is called Lula. Your first moment of being was just before you chose the path. Yep. You see, Lula, he continued, this world and everything in it, all your memories and dreams, your mother, your father, and Rofesso have been created by you. You have arranged the data into a stream of consciousness that will not become real until you lay your hand on the genie and verify the information. You will return to your village where your mother and father happily await you. The program will be set and will continue to run indefinitely. Awesome. Your people will be free to choose their own paths in life. You will forget that you began as a program. You will be free to run anywhere you like, to live the life you choose and grow old. Free to laugh and learn and perhaps most importantly, you will be free to love. What about the other wizard, I wondered? Once you verify, he replied, the bug in the system that you think of as the other wizard will be deleted. Thank you for this learning experience. How could I choose otherwise? I slowly reached out my hand and laid it on the genie. It felt warm, humming with life. I see the world I have created as it becomes real. I feel myself forgetting that it started as a program. What does it matter? I will be with my mother and father again. We will be free and happy. And now I have a story to tell. Hey. Was it a dream or a memory? I do not know, but let it begin. Once upon a time. There we go. A good ending, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it was lovely, eh? It's so lovely. Ooh, the genie.
So yeah, that's Jizzlepath Genie, the good ending. <laughs> Thank you for playing. But... I did. I've already tried the other path, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> I know it's different. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, ride the dragon. Oh, we've got to ride the dragon. Yeah, we're riding the dragon. Once upon a time. Isn't that how stories are supposed to begin? That is how my mother always began her stories. But oh, come on. why can't they end that way? Because the ending is usually the when the promise of everlasting <laughs> happiness is proclaimed. What are stories if not the memories of our people? And if memory is any clue, there is no guarantee of happiness. Is it just a myth that there is any such thing as happily ever after? There will be if I, if I get survived this Memories, a broken mirror, fragments of reflective glass and fractures of light gleaming in brilliance for a moment before fading forever into vague washes of soft color oh, and deepening on. shade. Sometimes, the harder we try to myself. focus on them, the more they fade and slip from our grasp. Beautiful shards that, when taken all together, make us who we are. Memories or dreams. Sometimes it is impossible to tell the difference. No. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> hmm? Oh, what a, what a cop out. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was a bit of an anti climax. So. With that, I'm going to end the stream, I think. And I think I'll call it a night. <laughs> I know, right? Where's the dragon? Got my hopes up there. Oh, well. We'll go up here, just in case. Last night in my dreams, no, 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 no. a mysterious okay. wizard came to me. He no. spoke in a foreign voice, a series of strange sounds that formed a single word. In that word was a message that I understood. He said that I had what been chosen, out. and at the same time, cursed. Okay. With that, I'm going to end the stream. Where is it? I want to thank everyone who came out. Yeah, interesting night. White Shadows was good, and yeah, it was a path genie, I suppose. <laughs> it was it, it was a lot. It was different. We did, oh, disappointed with that dragon. Oh well. All right, I'll see you all later. Bye bye.